We're shocked by you know what's transpired, what's what's gone on, and, and we're just going to have to find a way to move forward. What is Wednesday going to look like with the budget? Well, this is another thing that we need to um, sort of you know um, um, calm down, and we need to find a way to make it work. We need to find a way to uh, uh, to get through this. Uh, well, how how do you do that? <laughs> Well, there's still a, a lot of um, sort of unanswered questions. Uh, um, my hope would be that the mayor, it's his budget, uh, that the mayor would be there uh, Wednesday uh, uh, for his budget as the mayor of the city of Toronto, because after all, it is his budget. And I think that that's for us uh, would be the simplest way forward. Uh, if the mayor chooses uh, then not to be there uh, for Wednesday's budget, it would be my hope that, uh, that the council would continue to treat it as the mayor's budget um, and, uh, and move forward uh, on that basis. Because this budget has a huge gaping hole in it uh, of about a billion dollars, uh, which is unfunded. Uh, and, and quite frankly, um, we can tinker at the edges, but that's not going to fix it. Have so, you heard that the mayor might stay on long enough to lead the budget? No, I haven't. I haven't heard anything. I, I haven't. Uh, I haven't chatted with the mayor um, about it. Um, I, I don't know what the mayor will do. Have you spoken to the mayor since all of this started? I personally have not spoken to the mayor. Um, I know that this is um, a difficult period for him. Um, I want to respect his uh, privacy in this. Uh, I, I know that. Um, you know, the decisions that he has been making have been very, very difficult for him personally, uh, for his family, and for the city, quite frankly. So um, I think we all need to be cognizant of that. Have you spoken to Deputy Mayor Jennifer McKelvey over the weekend? And if so, what is she saying? Uh, I, I had a brief conversation uh, with the Deputy Mayor uh, on the weekend. She called me. I called her back. Uh, uh, she asked me for my advice. and. Uh, uh, in my opinions, uh, um, uh, on, a f on a few things, I, I gave them to her quite candidly, very much in the same way that I'm giving them to you now. The mayor's race is on now. Correct. Uh, who do you think? What type of person do you think should take over the mayor's role or be involved in the next mayor? Someone who's going to speak candidly about the city's problems. Uh, we are. Uh, a city in decay. Uh, we have a huge funding shortfall uh, that is not going to be covered uh, by, by tinkering at the edges, uh, by, you know, property tax increases, uh, by, you know, fees and parking charges and all these other kinds of things that we, we have been trying to sort of cobble it together. Um, that's, not, that's, not why, uh, that's not how we're going to build a great city. So we are a city. Uh, um, I believe we're still a, a, a fantastic city, a, a fantastic city to live in. Uh, but we are a city in decline. Uh, I think we see it all around us. You see the potholes. You see the garbage bins. Uh, you see the state of our parks and our bathrooms, our public washrooms, and all of those other things. Um, it's all around us. And, uh, and we, have, uh, we have a huge uh, gap in our budget. Uh, we have uh, a provincial government that, that has been, quite frankly, treating us like a small town, uh, like a small town council. We're a big government. We're the center of the province of Ontario. We're the engine of this country. And quite frankly, we, we are a very sophisticated uh, level of government. And quite frankly, we should be given the authority uh, to govern ourselves in that way uh, as, uh, as a senior partner uh, in the you know uh, Canadian Federation uh, as a, as a recognized level of government, uh, with the ability to tap into the resources uh, to build a, a, a truly magnificent city, the city that we all love.